Lukic, Treba, you guys there? Look, it's Tennyson. I can see that, Lukic. We're both in front of the same screen. Not now, guys! Look, a few days ago, my Omnitrix received a message. But every time I try to play it, nothing happens. Are you sure this can't wait until you're done? Whatever it is you're doing? Oh, uh, this? That's just siphon. Rick and I have that covered. About this message, I'm worried that someone might be in trouble, but they're also having trouble contacting me. <sighs> One second. Sounds like a problem for Asmund. No, it doesn't. We can easily handle this problem on our own. Well, where do we start? I don't know. Check the plumber records on my Omnitrix and see if you can figure it out. Are you sending for backup? Gotta go! Uh, Treba? Yes, Blukage? Do you remember exactly which chapter and subsection would answer this problem? Or should we just start from the first page? The plumber records on Ben's Omnitrix is huge! It'll take forever to go through it all! You're the one that said we could handle it! No, I wasn't! Yes, you were! No, I wasn't! Yes, you were! Fine, let's get reading. Good evening, Internet World and Universe! This is Orash here, if you couldn't tell. Today, we're gonna be talking about everything that the Omnitrix can do, down to every feature and function. Let's get started. This one looks pretty good. Let's begin with a bit of background. The Omnitrix was developed by Azmuth of the Galvan to promote interstellar peace after his previous invention, Ascalon, brought upon violence. As an apology to his lover, Zenith, the Omnitrix can preserve over a million DNA samples in which the user can then transform into that being for a period of time. With the genetic database larger than anything seen before, the Omnitrix can act as a backdrive for the universe in case any species go extinct. While at first the DNA was collected personally by Azmuth's assistant Myax, he developed a series of worker drones known as Velisicus Biopsis, which would then fly around the galaxy and sample DNA. When the DNA is collected, it is then brought back to the artificially grown planet Primus, where it is stored in the codon stream. The codon stream preserves all the Omnitrix's DNA samples, which can then be downloaded to the Omnitrix for use. Contrary to popular belief, the Omnitrix does not need to be constantly synchronized to Primus in order for it to function. Think of Primus as your computer, and the Omnitrix is like an iPod. After downloading music from your computer to your iPod, you can then disconnect your iPod and continue listening to said music without any type of connection to the computer. The Omnitrix can store an inconceivable variety of DNA samples from organic, inorganic, cosmic, and even multidimensional DNA. However, the samples must be from a species that has a certain level of intellectual sapience. From Earth, the Omnitrix could have human, dolphin, and mouse DNA, but anything lower class with savage, feral nature would corrupt the intellectual mind of the user. From what we've seen, the most feral transformation that one can use the Omnitrix to transform into with no repercussions is a Vulpamancer. After the prototype Omnitrix came the Ultimatrix, which came with new features, but new setbacks as well, both of which we can go over later in this video. When Azmuth recalled the Ultimatrix to be dismantled, he gave Ben the completed official Omnitrix. The Omnitrix has an expansive amount of features the user has access to. The main ones are usually depicted with its own special color. The most common use for it is transformation, represented by the color green. After selecting an alien to become, the Omnitrix alters the user's DNA to become a prime version of that species. The result will be the fittest, healthiest version of said alien and, when working properly, downloads the instincts native to that species, allowing the user to automatically know what the aliens are capable of after transformation. Although, the Omnitrix only turns you into the species relative to your own age, so for a example, Grey Matter is the prime example of a Galvan, but a 16-year-old, which is why he's still not as smart as Azmuth. You can see subtle characteristics defining Ben's aliens with age through the four series. Upon transformation, the Omnitrix can equip the user with special handicaps needed to sustain the transformation, such as Energy's radiation suit, Goop's anti-gravity projector, and Brainstorm's breathing brace. I never knew that was a breathing brace. Again, the Omnitrix must be working properly for these functions to activate. The Omnitrix can also provide the user with uniforms, some even retaining the elements associated with the alien's homeworld attire. 
It should be noted that while the show does depict Ben's transformations with a lot of detail and fancy cinematography, these are aesthetics only meant for the audience, as Ben's transformations happen in an instant. The Omnitrix is unable to completely merge the user with artificial beings, and creates incomplete transformations such as Upgrade. This is why Ben's voice is still the same when he is Upgrade, and he's unable to retain his forms when not merged with the technology he's upgrading, unlike pure mechamorphs like Ship. When transformed, the Omnitrix limits the time one can stay as an alien before transforming back to their original form, putting it into Recharge Mode, the red setting. Each iteration of the Omnitrix handles this differently. The prototype Omnitrix gave Ben a set time limit of 10 minutes per transformation. This was believed to prevent the user from being overwhelmed by the DNA samples as it fuses with Ben's biology itself. When recharging, the Omnitrix remains red until its internal core is refreshed enough to do another transformation. The user can only become one alien before having to default back to their original form, to which they can then select another alien after enough recharge time has passed. Transformations overwhelming the user have been present in aliens like Big Chill, an asexual transformation that forced Ben to hatch 14, I'm talking 14 offspring during the Necrophrygian's reproduction cycle, and Swampfire, blossoming as a form of puberty. Although it appears that the more experience one has with the Omnitrix, the less of a problem this really is, as future versions of Ben can remain for an alien for hours, even days. Ben would later learn how to switch between alien forms without having to default back to his original human form. The Ultimatrix changed the transformation range to be based on energy instead of time. The user can become an alien for a significantly longer period of time, but changing between alien forms will cause the overall time limit to shorten. The more aliens the user accesses in one sitting, the duration of each transformation is shortened. The official Omnitrix appears to have a combination of both methods, but is relatively unknown even to Ben. However, with this Omnitrix, this can be bypassed to remain as one transformation for an indefinite amount of time using the lifeform lock function or the master control. More on that later. The Omnitrix can also store new DNA samples into a database using its yellow setting, Capture Mode. Either by touch or an extended projection, the user can replicate any sapient DNA not already stored in the Omnitrix and immediately allow access to DNA as a unique transformation. The blue setting, Recalibration Mode, has only been seen once. While we've seen that in the future where Ben never takes off the Omnitrix, it continues to grow with Ben's maturing body, we're shown in Ben 10 Returns Part 1, if the Omnitrix is dormant for a long period of time without use, it must first recalibrate when activated before granting access to all of its features again. When recalibrating, the Omnitrix can then change its cosmetics to reflect the alteration. Lastly, we are greeted with the orange setting, or self-destruct self mode. Although the Omnitrix is practically indestructible, even by multiversal standards, the one thing that has been shown to actually damage the Omnitrix is itself. This feature's power is designed to completely incapacitate the Omnitrix in a desperate situation. When activated, this mode will destroy the Omnitrix in 30 seconds, but if the charge were to build up long enough, it could destroy the entire universe. The Omnitrix has also been shown to adapt to color of certain types of energy when they are in contact. Eon, who has chrono-manipulative abilities, has been able to interfere with the Omnitrix due to his inconceivable knowledge of the Omnitrix from time traveling, both when he attempted to turn Ben into a genetic copy of himself to take his place, and when he used the Omnitrix's signal to restore him to the timeline, the Omnitrix turned purple. Similarly, Gwen's mana has also interfered with the Omnitrix on a few occasions, allowing the Omnitrix to glow pink. Both of these colors were a result of tampering with the device, but only shown to be the case with the prototype Omnitrix and Ultimatrix. It is unknown if the official Omnitrix is still susceptible to chrono and mystical energies, but some evidence suggests that it's been improved to negate these effects. On the topic of older features, the Ultimatrix dial has turned black when deactivated. Now that we've covered the basics, we can delve into the special additional features the Omnitrix has. The first is a universal translator. It's pretty self-explanatory, translating all alien languages in range of the user in real time. If the species language is unable to be processed by the translator, the user can simply change into that species using the Omnitrix to further gather verbal information. The Omnitrix protects the user in a number of ways, even with special abilities not native to the current transformation species. 
It's been demonstrated to have the ability to prevent the user from being overshadowed or mind controlled. It's prevented mutations from highly toxic situations like being around corrodium or even being affected by Dr. Animo's mutation ray. The Omnitrix also protected Ben from Albedo's incomplete Omnitrix's feedback, whereas Albedo's Omnitrix did not. We'll be covering more failsafes later in the video. Cosmetically, the Omnitrix can change its appearance and display format a number of ways, and can either grow or shrink its size to comfortably fit the user. Should the Omnitrix need any maintenance work that must be done on Primus, the Omnitrix can teleport the user to the planet at any given time. Although, after the original Omnitrix was destroyed, the Omnitrix Prime is now able to store the DNA digitally into its own database. The Omnitrix's artificial intelligence is perhaps one of the more baffling features. We've seen it treated just like a computer, only responding to Ben's commands in a strictly informational sense, but we've also seen it appear to have a mind of its own. Ben himself questions whether or not the Omnitrix is self-aware, or just really a smart computer. Not only can the Omnitrix manipulate the user's DNA, but other beings as well, both in close range and in long range. Ben has been able to cure civilians that were corrupted by the hybrid to become DNA aliens, which not only transforms their entire body, but controls their mind, turning them into slaves. If amplified enough, the Omnitrix can even affect a designated species or population of a galaxy-wide scale. And in special scenarios, the Omnitrix has even been able to create its own species. This has been shown with Nanomech, a creation by the the Omnitrix to counter the nanochip queen in the live-action Ben 10 movie, Alien Swarm, and Chromastone, a replication of a one-of-a-kind crystal sapien, the Guardian of Petropia. While in this universe, Ben's Omnitrix is the only fully functional and completed version, Ben has had some interactions with other Omnitrixes as well. When synchronized, it can unlock and activate transformations another Omnitrix may not already have access to. Additionally, the Omnitrix has a GPS with a universal range, voice command, a randomizer function, a homing device, audio and visual two-way communication, and indestructibility on a bare minimum multiversal scale. The most significant feature of the Omnitrix has to be its master control, allowing the user to access all of its features without the protection limits should the user be ready to handle that kind of power. With master control, the user can remain an alien for an indefinite amount of time, change between alien forms without first using their default form, and the Omnitrix's features with nothing more than a thought. Ben has used the master control a few times in the series, first by accident. And Asmuth has hinted that he will grant Ben unlimited access to master control for his 18th birthday. Before the official Omnitrix came to be, it did suffer a few imperfections and glitches before the final version. The most famous one being Ben's constant mistransformations where he would select one alien, but accidentally become another. This did not happen every time, but the cause of it was never really established. In relation, the prototype did not download the instincts of each species into the user's biology, so Ben had to figure out how each of the aliens functioned through trial and error. One of my favorite episodes, the introduction of Cannonbolt. Both of these errors were corrected when the Omnitrix first recalibrated, but were brought back when Kevin and Ben tried to hack the Omnitrix in Vengeance Vilgax Part 1. In Dr. Animo and the Mutant Ray, Ben temporarily detached the faceplate of the Omnitrix from its core, causing its transformations to fuse together at random. Another temporary glitch was present in the episode Ben Wolf, where after first acquiring the Leboan DNA, the duration of transformation lasted hours. This was due to the Omnitrix being stuck between capture mode and active mode. The Omnitrix has also been able to transform other beings into alien species when entangled with certain frequencies. All these glitches mentioned above were corrected and not present in the official Omnitrix, and any mistransformations are due to user error. The only instance of previous glitches carrying over to the official Omnitrix was the ability to transform other users and aliens as shown in Outbreak, but this was due to the Omnitrix's destabilization when Dr. Psychobos attempted to fix the Nematrix. However, a unique glitch was shown with Ben 10 and 23's Omnitrixes synchronizing together, allowing one Ben to control what the other transforms into. Tag Team! Albedo, the ex-lab assistant of Azmuth with the body of a corrupted genetic copy of Ben Tennyson, created the Ultimatrix, meant to improve upon the Omnitrix and cure him of his mutation, reforming him back to his original Galvan body. As no one was able to develop a fully functional Omnitrix other than Azmuth, this device came with some special features, yet unique drawbacks. It's primarily known for evolving the user's transformations into fierce, combat-ready counterparts of its original aliens. The Ultimatrix protects Ben's most powerful transformation 
Alien X by locking the DNA away unless specific keys are inserted by Gwen and Kevin. This key lock does not carry over to the official Omnitrix. While these features may seem like improvements, the numerous glitches in the Ultimatrix made it even more challenging to use than the prototype Omnitrix. The Ultimatrix's firewalls appear to be easily breachable by higher forms of intelligent species like Inspector 13. The Ultimatrix does not turn the user into a prime example of the species, but a genetic duplicate of whomever he scans, regardless of power or age. He also does not retain the instincts of said species and has to figure out how each one of them works manually, similar to the prototype Omnitrix recalibration. While both the prototype and official Omnitrix returns Ben to whatever he was wearing prior to the transformation, the Ultimatrix always defaults Ben to the outfit he wore when he first activated the device. One time, a glitch in the Ultimatrix made all the Ultimate DNA fully sentient inside of the Ultimatrix's simulation, where they were then taken by Azimuth to live normal lives. Although in the end the Ultimatrix was decommissioned, these glitches are corrected in the official Omnitrix. Lastly, let's tackle some of the failsafes the Omnitrix contains. While we are now well aware of the self-destruct mode, a lower tier version of this is present in the form of a green energy eruption whenever someone tries to remove the Omnitrix from Ben's wrist. The official Omnitrix is also genetically locked to only be used by Ben. Even the genetic code of his younger self is not valid enough for the Omnitrix to remain active. The Omnitrix only works for Ben Tennyson in its present day perspective. The Omnitrix also has a way of preserving Ben's consciousness. It won't allow him to transform back into human from Ditto unless all the Ditto clones are in the same area as each Ditto is only part of Ben as a whole. On the flip side, each Echo Echo clone can become its own sentient being and can even be killed with no harm done to Ben. It's also hinted that Bellicus and Serena, two-thirds of the tribiotic mind that makes up Alien X, are still conscious even when Ben is not currently transformed into Alien X. Lastly, should any of the large variety of features listed in this video still lead to Ben's death, the Omnitrix's AI is still able to kick in and do whatever it can to prevent Ben's termination. While we're still on the subject of Omnitrix features, we figured we'd break down some of the additional features that we've developed for Ben Tennyson in our own crossover series five years later. This Ben is equipped with Master Control and has much better understanding of the Omnitrix's many functions. The Omnitrix acts as a body cam, recording everything that Ben does in alien form, which can later be viewed or studied closer for information missed in battle. The body cam can also create a map of terrain and keep track of any other beings located in the area with the efficiency of a geographic coordinating system. The body cam's frame rate is high enough to keep flashes of light visible to the naked eye. These captures can even be projected holographically. It has an adapter cable which can and let Ben program multiple forms of technology and control it through his Omnitrix. With its advanced interface, it can give Ben remote access to his account in the Plumber database, store information about these transformations, and has a much cleaner AV call display than shown in the series. Ben can also switch between different modes for the Omnitrix, such as Stealth Mode, which turns the Omnitrix invisible, Uniform Mode, that gives his human form a transformation like Uniform, Classic Mode allows the Omnitrix to take the form of the prototype Omnitrix, Factory Mode disables the outer shell and cosmetics for easier operation, Protection Mode gives Ben a few automatic defenses, and a couple more modes that have yet to be revealed. In uniform mode, Ben is equipped with footwear that gives him flight capabilities via energy propulsion, a visor that can zoom into target species microscopically, breaking down its DNA to the real of its biology, and access to its top 10 most powerful transformations, the Powerhouse Playlist. When the Powerhouse Playlist is activated, the six vents along the side of the Omnitrix light up, and Ben also has the option to refuse to transform back to human even if the Omnitrix would naturally do so to protect him. And that just about covers everything! Hey, did you find anything? Hmm, we might have. Is the Omnitrix currently blinking? No. Is it exploding? No. Then no. Guys, this is serious! I really see that this file has something on it, but nothing comes out every time I hit play! Well, have you tried hitting the unmute button? Uh... Ben Tennyson, this is the 23rd time I've tried contacting you and you've still neglected to give me any kind of response. I give you the most powerful piece of technology. Thanks for the help, guys. But that guy gotta run. messages in there for you and you don't even use them correctly. I made it so I didn't have to teleport to you 
every single time I have to fix one of your problems with my device. You remember how annoying that was a couple years ago? Anytime something messed up, I'd have to show up as a hologram or teleport to you directly because I'm the one that has to go fixing it. I may be a Galvin. I am not a plancicule. I am not a repairman. I'm an inventor.